Hey everyone, Tinoth and Obarfield here, and welcome to Writer's Corner. Alright, so a few things have changed since between my last video and this video. First off, you may immediately notice my hair is different. My bangs are longer, but the, everything else is shorter. I like it that way, it's the favorite way I've cut my hair, and yes, I cut my own hair, I'm gonna pay someone to do that. The second thing, since my family and I travel full time, which you can check out on our travel website, livingnomadstyle.com, we are going to be moving. We're going to be in California for a short period of time, checking out San Francisco stuff, because we have a lot of stuff we want to do there. And then we're going to be going further down Southwest, Utah, Arizona, Nevada, I think. So we're going to be doing stuff down there. As such, I may not be able to record a video for the next week or next couple of weeks, but I'm going to try to because now I have a work laptop. And for those of you wondering what my shirt says, it says, OMG, my mother was right about everything because she is. No, uh, we get it. Thank you for updating us on your fantastic life, but what's the video going to be about anyway? Well, this video is actually a request. I was scrolling through the comments section on my videos because apparently people leave comments now. That's pretty awesome. And one of the comments was a question asking me, hey, you, can you do a video about magic and magic related creatures? And I thought, well, I could, but I've already done a video on that. And then I looked through and I kept looking through and I scrolled through all my videos and I hadn't. I hadn't done a video about magic-related things, and it burned me inside. So here I am correcting that. Whenever you go about adding magic into your story, either to spice it up because it fits, it's a natural phenomenon, or you want to add a bit of variability to your story, there are a few questions that you're going to want to ask yourself. First, what are the rules? What are the rules of this magic system that you're creating? Does it have no rules? Does it have lots of rules? Is it heavily regimented? Or is it more of a part of nature that continues to grow and flourish as time goes on? Second, how do people use magic? Is this an innate talent or ability like mutants from Marvel? Or is it something that is bestowed upon them by gods, goddesses, or deities? Or is this, again, something that comes from nature that you get whenever you commune with plants or the different elements? How do people use the magic in your story? Third, how powerful is the magic? Can it create city-annihilating infernos or continent-washing tidal waves? Or is it limited to things like small predictions or lighting candles? Four, what is the scope of your magic? I actually had this explained really well in an anime to me called Log Horizon because I'm a nerd and I watch anime. But basically, there is this wizard who says there are a few different scopes of magic. You have things that where it's magic relating to it affects one person, it affects an entire party, it affects a whole battle, it affects an entire war, it affects a town, a continent, a country, and then there is world-class magic, which affects the whole world. Which got me thinking, when do we decide the scope of magic? The fifth question you must ask yourself whenever introducing magic to your story, how does it affect your world? Is it part of the natural way? Is it kind of an abomination under a theocracy that you have on your country? What is it doing to your world? Is it making it flourish? Is magic drawing from nature so much that it's starting to kill plants and animals and turn creatures into abominations that must be destroyed? Does it affect living things as well? Or does it just change the way that the world operates? Does it change the laws of your world? Or does it operate safely within the confines of them? Now that you've asked yourself all of these very important, though sometimes difficult to answer questions, I have tips on not only how you can answer these, some of these questions yourself, but also some things that rely outside of that that you must also consider whenever you're writing magic. So here are five tips on writing magic in your story. First off, add a unique spin to the magic system. If you've never written fantasy before, you may not know that magic is used a lot, like a lot, and it is commonly either overplayed or underplayed, but occasionally it is a rare, masterful combination of both. If you've written fantasy before, you know what I'm talking about. And you also may know how difficult it is to create your own unique magic system that no one else has ever used ever. And I'm saying that you don't have to do that. You don't have to create your own thing that no one has ever thought of, used, or implemented. Rather, you can use your own spin or unique twist on an already implemented magic system. Maybe the magic in your world draws off of the four elements, but your unique twist is that the more you draw off of those elements, the more it fractures the earth and depletes its resources, which is not commonly done in fantasy. It actually incorporates a little bit of sci-fi elements into your story, which will separate it out. So being able to add unique twists or spins to the magic in your story is great. You don't have to create it from scratch. 
So what I would recommend whenever you're trying to add a unique spin or twist is think about what haven't I seen a lot of? What did I see in a story that I really liked but I wish they had done it this way? Read some stories that have magic in them. Look at what you like about those stories. Look about what you would change and then implement that into your story. Think about whether you want magic to be peaceful, chaotic, violent. How is this magic used? How can you make it unique? Now, of course, whenever you have amazing magic and you're creating powerful spells and flights of fantastic creative whimsy in your writer brain, and you're making it unique and wonderful and putting amazing twists and spins on it, you also have to make up rules, like I've talked about before, and you have to keep these rules consistent, which is the second rule, consistency. But Noah, why are you telling us to have consistency with our magic when a part of the great, amazing, creative ways to use magic is how unpredictable and varied it is? Well, it's important to keep magic unpredictable, creative, and varied, yes, but one of the great ways that you can do that is maintaining consistency. It sounds weird, but it works. If you have a strict set of rules and structure that sometimes can be bent but never broken, it allows your readers to have greater respect for you as an author both with your characters and the complexity of the world that you have built. Additionally, it creates more problems and challenges for your characters to face, and they may have to use this magic creatively or to think outside of the box to overcome these problems or challenges that you put in front of them, thus creating more of a creative style of magic while still maintaining consistency that lets your readers understand what's going on and doesn't make it seem like you're going to cheat and make sure that your characters just never die or that they die because of something you didn't explain. A great way to keep consistency is to write the rules down. Whenever you're trying to create consistency, if using death magic automatically kills everything within a 5 foot radius, that might include other people. You have to be consistent, so whenever you're thinking up the rules, make sure that they're going to affect everything the same way. Give a reason, give a valid reason why. My third tip, don't let your characters get too overpowered too quickly. Many writers have trouble with this for a couple of reasons. One, even though we have a wonderful, amazing set of rules and systems in place, whenever we written ourselves into a corner or we push our characters in one direction or the other that we find undesirable, we tend to just break the rules to get them out of the situation, which is the wrong thing to do. Now, the other reason why we tend to have characters that get way too overpowered too quickly is because we have the natural tendency when we're writing to give our characters problems and challenges that they overcome, this is natural, but over the course of the book, they become so capable that literally nothing can stop them. Say, well, you need a diamond the size in my head to cast this powerful ritual spell that will annihilate anyone who you choose for the next 10 years. Well, if you have an expert thief who has done things like that before, that becomes pretty easy to do. A great way to make sure that doesn't happen? Make sure your characters never get powerful. Set a natural cap on the magic they have. Maybe your character's naturally weak in magic and has to use lots of creative, low-level spells to be able to get their way out of situations. Maybe you can't output more magic than your body naturally produces. There are a lot of ways to make sure your characters don't get overpowered too quickly. You just have to keep an open mind about it and rely on your consistent set of rules and systems, checks and balances. My fourth tip, deal with magical ramifications. Magic has the possibility to have much greater ramifications than anything else because of its unpredictable, almost reality-bending nature sometimes. We need to deal with that. A lot of writers have the tendency to avoid this step. To be like, okay, my characters aren't overpowered, I have a consistent set of rules and balances, I know where magic comes from, I have all of the things set up. But what happens whenever a ritual goes wrong? What happens whenever a powerful wizard turns evil? What happens whenever a witch decides to raise an undead army? Make sure that if you have a good side of magic, make sure something bad happens somewhere else in the world. That way, at least you know, magic isn't all it's cracked up to do. Now my fifth and final tip, don't freak out. Don't try and make an entire magical system in one day. Don't let the rules overwhelm you. Have fun with the magic, and if you notice a problem, write down a rule, go back, add that in, change the story a little bit, and then keep going. Whenever you go back in to write the next day after you finish the chapter before, read over that last chapter. Does anything strike out to you as weird, as off? Does anything do that you did break the rules? A little bit of stress this is okay, that's natural. You're a writer, you're probably gonna stress out until you need doses of coffee just to keep you up and now you're jittery and panicky, but hey, you're writing a paranoid character anyway, so why not? Approach it one bit at a time until you're comfortable with it and you can slowly absorb more and more into your writing style. Now with all of that out of the way, it's time that I brag about my book. My novel, Legendland, this fantastic piece of literature right here, is available on a plethora of places. 
You can find it on iTunes, Barnes & Noble, Amazon, Smashwords, my publisher's website, or my website, www.arc-storm.com. And if you order it off of there, I'll personally sign it for you. Hey, just owning my book ain't enough for you? Of course it's not. You also want to keep up to date with me. So you can follow me on Facebook, Goodreads, Wattpad. I'm doing something pretty interesting real soon here with that. Or Twitter. I tend to put out all my updates and whether I'm going to be able to do a video or not on there. So it's pretty important to follow me on there. Or if you're an amazing person and you just like to stick on YouTube, that's okay. You can comment or subscribe below or do both. I love when you do both. Okay, I hope this video has been helpful, that you have enjoyed it, that the person who requested this has found it useful, and most importantly, that you continue to enjoy it.